Okay, welcome back. Um, we continue with uh, Lucas Costner and the Hobbits. We are going to uh, our former global fellowship. It's a global fellowship of Karen Coyle, Rura Greenall, Lucas Costner, Martin Manston, and Anders Söderbeck. Have you seen Anders? I haven't seen him, but uh, maybe you'll be late. Yeah, I, I hope so. Okay, uh, they are going to uh, to um, from from the different individual backgrounds. They want to present a comprehensive view on the challenges to be tackled in order to be able to expose valuable local content to a global audience. Well, good luck. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So this is, I'm clearly understandable, despite my Dutch accent. Um, we'll start with the introduction. Once upon a time, in the Dark Ages, precious knowledge was stored away in safe places scattered around the known world. The safe places were guarded by a special order, the Knights of Knowledge. The precious knowledge was under the protection of the Lord of the Strings. There was a myth about a hidden jewel somewhere in the precious knowledge. One ring to rule them all, the Linger Ring Gold. <laughs> it was the quest of the Lord of the Strings to find the Linger Ring Gold and employ it to the benefit of the world. This is where our story begins. Okay. Part one. We have five parts. So, so I am Sir Lucan. You may have heard about me. I'm the royal butler from the round table of the Knights of King Arthur, also known as the Guardian of the Treasures of the Knights of Knowledge. I am also known as the Lord of the Strings, Lots, so you may call me Lots of Knowledge. And the funny thing is that in, if you look on Wikipedia, it says about me that he is usually, usually the last to die, and that's pretty sure I'm, 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 very, I'm very fine with. So I'm looking, I'm treasuring the precious knowledge in our books and strings. This is my quest is to find the lingering gold. And I'm pretty sure it's hidden somewhere in our stacks. And the knowledge that we preserve is accessible to all pilgrims who come knocking on our door. And I hope this works. Yes. Um, yes, that's the lingering gold that we're looking for. I've been looking for it for almost most, most of my life, but I haven't found it yet. And I've heard uh, pilgrims speak about it, so I know it exists, but I have no idea what it looks like. Some say there is no gold, there is no ring. Some say it's not a ring, it's something else. Some say it's just the strings. And the others say, it's only fool's gold. Even more, people say, it's not here, it's elsewhere. So what am, am I supposed to do now? So, I have to be careful because my overlord, Sir Mark of the Subfield, <laughs> he wants me to do my duty and guard the strings. He thinks my quest is a waste of time. But, you know, I have to, I have to go up. I think I only found broken strings, decaying strings, messy strings in our precious knowledge, precious knowledge. But you know, last year there came knocking on our doors this wandering prophet or non-prophet, Richard the Evangelist, you may have seen him around, 
of the tribe of the Dubliners who call themselves the non-profits. And he sold me this magical discovery too, with a search box. And he promised me that it would give me access to the world's knowledge. So I was trying to find this lingering gold, but it didn't help me. <laughs> so, yes. So, so last night I went to the local tavern to drink one of the, the real, the fine real ales. You know, you may, you may know the, the, the local uh, ales uh, that consist of a bucket of uh, lukewarm, a yellowish uh, water uh, with no head on it. But it's really, a, really an invigorating drink because, you know, guarding the strings makes one very thirsty. So that's the landlord, Ted. And I heard Ted talk about Sir Tim of the Five Stars. And I think maybe Sir Tim knows where to find the lingering gold. So I have to talk to the philosopher. He's supposed to be here, but I haven't seen him yet. So I will try to contact him magically uh, through the use of this magical tool. Yes. I hope he answers. Anders, are you there? What? What does that mean? <laughs> oh, I think it is. That doesn't sound good. No. No, uh, anyway, that doesn't work so much. You know what? I'll just pop over around the corner to meet our friendly neighborhood alchemist, Karen. <laughs> Hello, Karen. Hello. Where's your script? Oh, here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, here. So, librarian, you need, we need to find some gold in here. We need to figure out how to turn this straw or these books into gold. Yeah. And the gold here is hidden. Okay, but what do I have to do? Um, well, you simply have to change your holdings into gold. And who's going to tell me how to do it? And most of all, what does it cost? Oh, it's very easy. You just take three of this and three of that. First, you must drink from the magic cup ah. of Sir Tim. Does it contain ale? It uh, probably does, yes. And then you have to wander lonely in the cloud for a while. Yeah. I'm getting all cloudy now. Uh, but we have to follow the rules, as you know. The rules? The rules have come to us from on high. They are our goal. 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 Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about old RDA or RDNA and if then la and boof, boof, which is so secret that no one even knows what it is. But they claim that they will part the waters and arrive at every continent. Um, yes, but you know, the biggest fear we have is the quadritarian fur rings. <laughs> and the duotarian lip framers. You know, we are unibibliotarians <laughs> and we are, we are ready to fight until the death, or at least until tea time, yes. to, to, st to make it stick that way. But we have heard about this, this spirit, the magical spirit called the owl. You mean the wall? Whatever you do, don't wake the wall. It will just lead to confusion. So I think I can't cope with this anymore. I think I'll retire now. Oh, th that's fine. Uh, don't worry about it. We've got, as you'll see through the rest of the days, we've got some wide awake people ready to take your place. <laughs> I'm retiring. Yeah. So there are dead the harder. Yeah. Hey, but can't you let us knock the yeah, I, I can't speak our local hobbitish language. I, I have to speak the common tongue. Um, yeah, 
Dearest Hobbits of the Library Shire, I'm Furbro Bookins. I'm a library hobbit from Linkton. Now, we all know hobbits live in holes. Not dirty, wet holes, nor sandy, dry holes. But well-appointed holes that reflect the fact that library hobbits are creatures of comfort. Hobbits like an easy pace of life, not for us as adventure, nor challenge, nor change. We're sturdy, reliable types with a sense for tradition and an eye for detail. That isn't to say that we're without skill. We're resourceful and resilient in times of trouble. We rise to the occasion. And friends, this is why I'm addressing you. Lord Lucan, Lord of the Strings, has called upon us, good creatures of Middle-earth, that we might join the quest to find the lingering gold. Now, hobbits, you'll complain that this is a matter for the long-legged people of Middle-earth. But bear with me for a while. While hobbits have lived in the many marks of the Shire for hundreds of years now, this is not our ancestral home. We came from a place to the east, and we travelled by the, by the Vale of Paris principles, the Dale of Dewey, to the Library Shire, the near mark, the far mark, the out mark, and even down here in the fields and subfields, just short of the banks of the River Wen. And during these wandering times, did we not change and adapt to our circumstances? What I'm saying is that while we have become hobbits of habit, this is not who we are. In times of change, we adapt and move forward. Lord Lucan's quest for the lingering gold is not a question of folly. It asks us to search within ourselves and find the essence of who we are and what we do to re-establish the value in the library hobbits. To do this, however, we must work with the great, greater web of Middle-earth. We must speak their common speech, not our own markish tongue. We must parlay using their terms, making them our own. Indeed, we must help develop the common speech to make it reflect our library hobbit values, which are good values that we must share. And just make the case for doing library hobbit things in the library hobbit way, if that is indeed the better way, and so it may be. A word of caution, though. We might expect the Middle Earthians to come to us to parlay, but this is folly for we must go out to them. The Library Shire is not a great centre for learning. Indeed, in the coming age, there may be no such hubs of knowledge because this age will be based on dialogue, on relations. We must go open to up the Library Shire, not only by using the common speech, speech but by knowing their traditions for greeting and storytelling. And finally, the quest of Lord Lucan. While a great endeavour is not a task that follows a single path, it is a many-stranded rope, and the library hobbit strand may great, differ greatly from the other strands. There are many roads we might take, and we must choose the road that is right for each library hobbit. We must do it now, we must seize the opportunity, rather than waiting for the dark forces without, to come and find the lingering gold, for they cannot see with the eyes of the library hobbit. They cannot know with the mind of the hobbit, nor can they share the lingering gold fairly and without prejudice. So onward, dear hobbits. Right. <clears throat> and now we come to the, the story of Sir Linkelard. Or the story of Sir Linkelard and the format monsters, the deep sea owl, the wolf philosophers, and the standard unicorn consistent identifier. <laughs> Two minutes. Um, Sir Linkelard lived in a town together with a lot of quite, quite a lot of format monsters. Um, of course, there was, there was Mark the Undead. He'd been declared dead for the last five he likes, I think. Uh, his brother Mods, or I'd say twin, perhaps. Uh, he has an eczema thing on the head. Also, the Mets monster could swallow any format. Very scary. You might 
think that this is a bit weird, but it usually worked out fairly well because the, uh, the town had employed uh, two of the, the most esteemed format tamers. Um, and they, uh, so it usually worked out pretty well. But so Linkalot could help, he could not help feel that perhaps these monsters, they would scare people away. And, and he had heard about uh, a high priestess of usability and a, and a wizard of conversion. Um, they were doing a presentation in Bath, and he, was, uh, he decided to go there. But it was a long way to go. The first struggle was to get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first struggle was, was crossing a deep lake. Um, he jumped in the water, and some, some people on, on, the, um, on the shore said, you must beware of the deep sea owl. Um, but Sir Linkalot was cunning and simply said, hang on mate, uh, deep sea owl, that does not really pass a rigorous test. It's ontologically impossible to have a deep sea owl and uh, with a small gurgle it, it disappeared. When he emerged from the, uh, from the cold waters he heard a chilling sound. For a balloon! <laughs> Thank you. It was a pack of wolves. At first he thought he might get stuck here waiting for them to go away, but he eventually decided that they were actually not going anywhere and uh, they seemed to have problems working things out. Um, so he basically uh, went past them. They were going nowhere anyway. Uh, finally though, he actually reached... Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, Finally, Sir Linkalot reached the, the village of Bath, where he had heard the high priest of wizard that they were nearby. Um, and he stepped up to a villager and said, uh, I'm looking for a, a, a wizard and a priestess. Do you know where they are? The villager said, 53, with a cunning smile. I'm, I'm sorry, said Sir Linkalot, 53. And I meant, do, do they have a location? Uh, no, just 53, said the villager. And when Sir Linkalot looked puzzled, he had it. It's very persistent. Uh, and he said, but how do I act on that? Well, you can go to the National Library of Germany where the latest location is recorded. The villager, seeing that Sir Linkelot now looked very tired, then whispered, but I know for a fact that they will be presenting in this very room in about 15 minutes. Sir Linkelot, both tired and elated, uh, sat down and waited. Oh, this is your point. <coughs> so we never did find Anders, and he didn't show up, but he was able to send us a stringogram. So we have a message from him. Dear fellows, when you read this, I have already left the western shores of the Baltic Ocean to where the sun rises in the mythical city of Helsinki. <laughs> Through meditation and reading, I've come to realize that mankind's search for the perfect ontology, the infinitely persistent URI, and the common agreement between all peoples on what format to use is doomed. Such perfection can only be achieved by the highest of beings, which is Godot. It was the God ontology that was used to create the universe. All of your institutions, OCLC, IFLA, even the mighty Library of Congress will fail. Only Godot can save us. Our only hope is that through seclusion, meditation, the reading of sacred meditation, okay, <clears throat> the reading of sacred texts, <clears throat> talking to sages and philosophers, and following a strict diet, Godot will eventually be revealed to us. Through Godot, we know the past, current, and future state of the universe. It is worthy of joy, and we will have celebrations. Without it, we are doomed to endless transience. Until its revelations, all our efforts are futile. Therefore, I withdraw from the world in Helsinki, where God was last seen. I will begin my search waiting for Godot, in humbleness, <laughs> Anders. <coughs> 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 
But fear not, we have some sort of intermediate solution for you, the roadmap. We promise to bring you a roadmap. And we have it. It's the Resource Open Access Description Metadata Application Profile. <laughs> I'm sure you will love it. Um, Hobbit? Yes. Dear colleagues. Yes. Could I ask you to step forward so I can actually see you, so you know who I'm addressing? Yes. <laughs> Lucas. Yeah. Lord Lucan, please. Sorry. Lord <laughs> Lucan. Do you have any gold? I'm really... No. I mean, I'm, no, I don't think so. But even if I had, I wouldn't be interested anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye. That would like to the audience for Yeah, you can help with that one. Do you have any gold? Well, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm going to look around for it and see if I can find some. So, I bet I will. Okay. Let's move on. Lord Lupin, do you have the tools you need? Well, you know, I work in a library. I don't, I don't have any tools. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Are you willing to learn? Are you willing to learn? No, no, no. I don't. I, don't, I can't learn. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> How about you? Well, I don't have the tools, but I think we can learn how to use them. Let's move on. Not so fast. Yes. Okay. Do you have the money you need? Well, I told you I work in a library, so no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you willing to make changes? No, I work in a library. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Karen, how about you? Um, no, we don't have much money, but I. I think we're going to have to make some changes in order to go forward. Let's move on. Lord Lucan. Hmm? Connections. No, we don't get out much. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Connections? Oh, yeah, yeah, we never miss a party. We are party sent. Lord Lucan. What? Are you ready to excavate? <sighs> Well, it's hard, I think. Much too hard. I don't want to even think about it. Think about it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Karen, how about you? Well, sure. I think we're going to have to. Let's just get started. What do we have to lose? Okay. Karen, are you willing to share? Well, sure. Sharing is what we're all about. Sharing means more of everything for everyone. And how about you, Bob Lucan? It's my precious. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. And that's the end yes. of our story. <laughs> I guess. Thank you. Oh. One more thing. We don't take questions.